Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I want to make another top 5 video for you guys on GTA Online. And for today's top 5, we have top 5 features that almost nobody uses. These are features that have been in the game for some time. Some are actually pretty recent. Some were actually added with the last update, the last major update that we had. And people know about them, but people just don't use them. And if people use them, they maybe use them just once or twice, and then they never use these features ever again. And there's a good reason for why, and I'm going to be explaining each one. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Top 5 features that almost nobody uses, and this isn't really like activities. These are just things that are available in the game, things that you can do, but people just don't do them. Starting off at number 5, we have shoplifting, and I bet some people are probably laughing at this right now and thinking, you can shoplift in GTA Online? Yeah, you can actually shoplift in GTA Online, and you can do it also in the story mode, but most of the time when you're in a store, you're going to be in there in the online, and I didn't know about this, at least for some time, because whenever I would go to a store, I would just buy snacks, and I actually did not notice this until probably a few months after the game came out, back in, you know, 2013, so I probably noticed this, like, you know, early 2014 that you could actually do this, and you basically, you go up to any convenience store, and when you're in that convenience store, you press square to shoplift on the PS4, or you press X to shoplift on the Xbox, and I don't know of any person that actually shoplifts. The only thing that I know is that when people go into stores is that they tend to buy snacks and just leave. Sometimes people will rob the store, but most of the time people will just get the snacks and they'll just leave. Shoplifting, what does it do? It steals one candy bar. That's basically what shoplifting does. And every single time you shoplift, you get caught. So you can't shoplift without consequences. You get caught. And I don't even know why you would need to shoplift considering the fact that you can get free snacks from your assistant at the office or from the assistant at the facility. So you have two different locations that you can get free snacks at. So, you know, why would anybody shoplift? It's kind of pointless, man. To tell you the truth, it's kind of funny because, you know, I have over a billion dollars in this game, but yet I'm shoplifting a candy bar and I'm going to get cops after me for that. You know, I'm pulling off a pretty big heist right here by stealing that candy bar. At number four, we have yacht moving. Now, this is pretty straightforward, and a lot of people tend to own yachts in GTA Online, but very rarely do I actually see people move around their yachts, and before this, I haven't moved my yacht in months. So it's been pretty much in this location at the top right of the map, that's where I moved it last, and it stayed there, you know, ever since. I don't really have a need to move the yacht. And moving the yacht, you, to move the yacht, you gotta go up to basically where the captain, the captain is on the top deck, and you talk to the captain, and you can move the yacht. It costs $25,000 to move the yacht, so even if you're moving the yacht just a few hundred meters, you know, you're moving it to the closest location to you, you are still gonna pay $25,000, which is a pretty ridiculous amount. $25,000 for moving a yacht, you know, that is basically like, you know, doing one VIP work or doing at least two contact missions. And I kind of talked about the yacht in a video I made a year ago in which I talked about, you know, features that people don't use anymore. But, you know, here we're specifically talking about moving the yacht. And, you know, people tend to go in the yachts, tend to spawn in the yachts, but I don't really see people moving the yachts. And people would move the yachts much more often if it was cheaper. If it wasn't $25,000 each time, people would be much more inclined to move the yacht. And... On top of that, in terms of trying to move the yacht, every single lobby that you join, well, not every lobby, but most lobbies that have like a decent amount of people in them, if it's like a, a, at least like a 20 person lobby, chances are your yacht is not gonna be in the same spot. So your yacht is pretty much gonna be moved around anyways because of all the people that have yachts. So if somebody has a yacht in that position, your yacht will be moved to a closer position or could be moved even farther away depending on how many yachts are in the lobby. So I think that Rockstar personally should really decrease the price of moving yachts. I mean, it, it, it can be a useful feature, but for $25,000 to move a yacht, it's just not worth it. There's so many other ways to get across the map and much more cheaply than this. Moving on to number three, we have the penthouse party. And this was a new feature that was added with the casino update. So the casino update back in July of 2019, this was added with it. So when you purchase a penthouse, you go up to that intercom phone and you have a bunch of features to do here. But the feature that we're talking about is the party. And the party costs $20,000, which I don't understand, you know, why you would need to pay money for people to come over and party at your you know, place, unless you're paying, you know, for wine and other things, then, you know, some degree it's understandable, but $20,000, you pay for a party, and after you do that, you have NPCs that basically show up in this kind of, like, living room area near the bar, they don't go anywhere else in your penthouse, they're just always here, right next to the bar, and 
this doesn't really do much. You know, all it does is the NPCs just stand here, you know, they pretend to talk to each other. You can't have really any inter interaction with them. You can't really do anything with them. They're just here. That's, that's all it is. And when the casino update came out, a few people did this. You know, they would purchase the party just to see what it would do. And then afterwards, it just didn't do it anymore. And I've been to a lot of penthouses. I've been invited to a lot of penthouses. I can't remember the last time that somebody actually did this. I mean, I did it here, but I can't remember the last time I was actually in somebody's penthouse and they would do it. And one thing they could have done differently is they could have done it where, you know, the people in your penthouse, the people at the party, they could actually sit down and they could play, you know, blackjack and three card poker. And you could also see what type of cards they get. I mean, you can see the regular NPCs in the casino playing. So like, why couldn't the NPCs, you know, play in your penthouse also? I mean, that would give it a little bit more interaction. But afterwards, when the party ends, the guests cause a big mess and I guess that that you know that creates some more level of detail makes the thing a little bit more unique you can call in the maid the cleaning lady and she will come in and clean it up and you can take a pass from her but other than that it's not really worth it and the penthouse gets dirty over time so you can still call the cleaning lady for the pass for another thing but other than that the party is kind of useless and a lot of people just don't use it at number two we have paying for heist preps now we were able to do this since the Doomsday Heist. When the Doomsday Heist came out, we were able to pay for all the preps, but the amount that we paid was just not worth it. And with the new Casino Heist that came out in December, we can pay for the optional preps. We can't pay for the mandatory preps. We can only pay for the optional preps, but even paying for the optional preps, it's just not worth it because those are optional. You don't have to do them, and you're going to be paying a massive amount of money. Like, I mean, take a look at this. $70,000 just for patrol routes. For patrol routes, $70,000, I could do that mission in less than 5 minutes and I'll be paying $70,000. And then the second mission, we pay $100,000 for this, for the EMP device. And you don't really need the EMP device on the stealth approach, it helps, but regardless, it's just so expensive, $100,000, and it just keeps going up. $150,000 for power drills. It's just not worth it. And I don't know anybody that has purchased this. One of my friends, one time, he purchased the disguises because we just didn't feel like doing that mission. But other than that, I can't think of anyone that has actually purchased these missions. It's just not worth it. It's so much money, and a lot of these missions, you can do them pretty quickly. They're not too long. So just paying $150,000 for a power drill mission? I mean, really? What was Rockstar thinking by making it that expensive? And the number one feature that almost nobody uses in this game is the ATM. Face it, when is the last time that you actually saw somebody use the ATM? I can't really remember. And I will say one good thing about the ATM. The ATM, if you're in the general vicinity and you see an ATM and you go up to it, it is faster than going for your phone because you're right there in Maze Bank. You click two times and you can just go in and deposit money so it makes it faster in that aspect but if you're nowhere near an ATM it's always faster to just bank for your phone and I didn't know that you could bank for your phone until probably at least a month after GT Online came out and I felt kind of stupid I realized you could actually bank for your phone and I kept running around looking for ATMs and the store the store, I would always rob the store, and then I would deposit the money in the exact same store that I robbed inside the ATM. So, you know, if you're in the general vicinity, the ATM can be a little faster to deposit. But other than that, you know, why would you need an ATM if you can just always deposit it for your phone? I just felt kind of stupid when I realized you could do it for your phone. A little bit unrealistic, but it makes things much more easier. But that's pretty much it for this list, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, enjoy my content, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.